buckle up, because in this video I'm going to reveal to you the Israelis' master plan to get rid of Iran once and for all. And finally, they seem to have gotten it right. Now, I'm not going to be breaking any state secrets here. All the think tanks, all the strategists, they all know this. But you're not going to hear about this on mainstream media, of course. This is why you come to my channel. Now, look, you have to understand what it is Iran does. Ever since the 1980s, Iran has developed a new model of exporting its own revolution to other weakened countries. Weak such as Lebanon, weak such as Yemen. They come in, they fill the void, and they farm these opposition organizations such as the Hezbollah, such as the Houthi rebels, in order to eventually to gain control over large chunks of those countries, such as South Lebanon, such as part of Yemen. In fact, the majority of Yemen. Now, this has been going on for over 40 years. This is their main revolution. And obviously, their first experiment was Lebanon. Lebanon was the first place where the Iranians tried this. They've developed Hezbollah. Now, Hezbollah means party. Allah means God. The party of God. This is where the name comes from, in case you were wondering. Now, the big surge in the popularity of Hezbollah in Lebanon actually happened because of a mistake that the Israelis have done, because they literally ran away in the year 2000 from Lebanon, leaving a huge void, a huge vacuum for the Iranians to fill through Hezbollah. So ever since the 2000 escape of the Israelis from Hezbollah, the organization has been arming itself to the teeth, and right now it's literally sitting on the fence and actually posing a major threat to the Israelis. Now the Iranians decide everything about what Hezbollah does, make no mistakes about it. They have internal freedoms about what to do in Lebanon, but it is the Iranians who call the big shots. Don't forget, at the end of the day, it is a proxy. The Israelis have to address this problem the same way the Israelis have to address the Houthi problems in Yemen. The Houthis are essentially firing rockets to the south of Israel. They're blocking the shipping lanes that lead to Israel. They're blocking the Suez Canal. The Hezbollah is firing rockets daily into Israeli towns. So this threat has to be addressed. And the reason we haven't seen a war between Israel and Hezbollah or between Israel and the Houthi rebels, despite these organizations firing rockets into cities, densely populated cities of Israel? Well, the reason is because the Israelis have a better plan. Obviously, the Israelis do not want a second front. They don't want a third front. They just want to get done with Gaza. And Hezbollah is on the same page. They're basically saying, look, the U.S. is here. The Navy is here. Israel is ready. They're deployed in the north of Israel. We don't want that kind of war. We want a surprise element, like the October 7th terror attacks by Hamas. So again, the Israelis looking at this and saying, look, we got a huge project in Gaza that requires a lot of resources, a lot of attention. Right now, we have two more threats we have to address. One in Yemen, the Houthi rebels, one in Lebanon. Now, Yemen is way too far to pose an actual threat to Israel, so the Houthi rebels kind of come in second. Hezbollah is literally on the fence, but it doesn't seem that they're interested in the war right now. So the idea here is, look, let's take care of Gaza right now, and then we address the Lebanon-Hezbollah problem. Now, the crazy part about this whole story is that the ones who call the shots are neither the Hezbollah or the Houthi rebels. It's Iran. And one thing that the Israelis have learned is not to make the mistakes of the past. The Israelis could have killed the Hamas years ago without firing a single shot by cutting off the oxygen from Iran to Hamas through Qatar. But instead, the Israelis literally enabled the Iranians to farm this terror organization in their backyard, hoping that this terror organization is going to morph into a civilian management authority and will let bygones be bygones. Now, that was a huge mistake. They're not going to do it again. Now, Gaza cleanup right now at this stage has to be military. They're way too close, and they have not just the potential, but also the capability, and they tend to cause a lot of damage to Israel. So this has to be a military cleanup. Now, with Hezbollah and the Houthi rebels, that doesn't have to be the case. Because both the Houthi rebels and Hezbollah will die, or at the very least become greatly diminished, once Israel cuts off the line that funds them all the way from Iran. Now, I've just mentioned that the Israelis have learned a valuable lesson in Gaza about not letting a proxy organization fester in your backyard. They're not going to make that same mistake again. So Hezbollah and the Houthi rebels will get addressed. But the way they will get addressed is completely different than whatever we saw so far from the Israelis and from the United States. This is a whole new ballgame. You see, the Israelis understand they cannot play the old rules. 
They cannot build great walls. They cannot build missile defense systems because the more you play defense, the more you invite offense. In football, when you play prevent defense, you're going to get scored on. It's the same thing here. They have to blitz. They have to go on the offensive. But for that, number one, they have to build a real army, which they're lacking in right now because what they've built is a huge police force to handle small conflicts within Israel. They basically follow down this path of there's not going to be any more great scale wars. So we have to scale down our military. That has to be rebuilt. It's going to take years. But they also have to project strength in the region. That's why you've seen them just take out one of the heads of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard in Syria in his backyard. But they also have to prepare for the ring of fire scenario because Iran at any moment can push that. Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, the Houthi rebels, the West Bank, whatever's left in Gaza. So all of this has to be addressed. The Israelis are not going to make the same mistake of just letting it be and playing defense. And that is going to be handled by breaking down Iran in the same game plan that Iran have been using against Israel and other countries. It's going to be beautiful. Check it out. Now, you see, Iran isn't what it seems like. On first glance, especially if you listen to mainstream media, Iran is one country, homogenous country, who hate Israel, love Khomeini, and love the Iranian Revolutionary Guard. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Iran is actually an extremely fractured country. Lots of angry and pissed off minorities. And all they need is a little help from a friend to turn this whole thing into a huge powder keg. Obviously, you have a lot of anti-Iranian Revolutionary Guard opposition inside Iran. We all knew this from before. But on top of that, you have to understand that there's lots of ethnic issues in Iran. Actually, the ethnic minorities in Iran comprise about 50% of the population of Azeris, Kurds, Arabs, and many others. And they've all been abused and they've all been treated like shit by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard by the Iranian people, by the Persians, who sit in the center of Iran and let all these guys on the periphery suffer. 50% of them below the poverty line. 50% of the entire Iranian political prisoners are Kurds. Now, the entire periphery of Iran is filled with these ethnic groups. Ethnic groups that have been discriminated against on culture, on money, on budgets. 50% of them live below the poverty line. And the crazy part about it that the entire set of the Iranian resources, the things they dig up from the ground, are located in these areas. And yet these areas are dirt poor, and the Persians, who live in the center of Iran, get to enjoy all the perks. And that makes people angry. Way more than religion. There's a lot of clashes and riots. There's a lot of protests in Iran about these things all the time. We just don't hear about it. All they need is a little push. And you'd be surprised how many of these ethnic groups have their own separatist organizations. Quasi-military that needs support, that needs supplies, that needs weaponry, that needs support, training. Now, this is exactly the model Iran did to the rest of the world, to the Middle East, to the Israelis. And now, this is going to happen in Iran. Now, you have the US, the Saudis, and the Israelis looking at this and saying, wait, you've been dividing and conquering? You've been basically meddling in other countries' business, taking over governments because of ethnically problematic countries like Lebanon, like Yemen? Wait a second. You have the same problem. All we need to do is fund these guys, help these guys, train these guys, and we're going to break you apart into five different countries. Problem solved for everybody. So this is, I believe, the next stage. We always talk about this next chess move, right? Everybody's moving the chess pieces. I think the next chess move on this board is an attempt by the Saudi-US-Israel coalition to start balkanizing Iran into different separatist regions to start pressuring Iran to back off. Because so far, the Israelis and the US and Saudis have been playing straight into the hands of the Iranians. Now, a move like this, which basically goes on offense and does this without firing a single shot, is exactly using the playbook of Iran against it. And if it works, might be the most brilliant move we've seen so far. See you next video.